Hello and welcome Starfish Maths. Today I'm looking at another past paper question and um, this one is taken from the Edexcel October 2020 paper and it's paper one pure maths and it's question nine. So I've got that on the screen there. If you're on your phone that might be really tiny to read <laughs> so I apologize for that uh, but do take a screenshot or make a note of the question if you need to. I'm going to be moving around the screen a little bit. So this question is it's a nice question because it, it um, practices quite a few different things and um, we've got a bit of differentiation and a bit of graph transformation skills involved so let's see part a we've got this function here and it's asking us in part a to find f dash of x so that's where it's differentiated i'll write it out again at the top here so f of x is quite a complex function uh, but having a think about the different ways you know of differentiating. This isn't just a basic, straightforward, simple differentiation. This is going to be using a rule. Um, so it's kind of um, like two functions being multiplied together. You've got the 4 minus uh, four x squared minus 2 and you've got the e to the minus 2x. They've got nothing to do with each other but they're being multiplied together. So that to me implies we're going to use the product rule. Um, the 4, actually, you could put with either of those functions, but we'll just keep it with the x squared minus 2 because um, it's there already, but that's fine. You can put it with the exponential if you want to. So uh, just changing my colour. I'm going to write it out as u and u prime just to make it really clear what I'm doing. But of course, if you want to just do it by sight, you can have a go and see if we arrive at the same answer. U, I'm gonna make the four x squared minus two and I'm gonna multiply out that bracket just so it's a bit easier to differentiate straight off. Uh, the V, I'm gonna make the e to the minus two x and let's differentiate these guys now. So the U differentiated is just gonna be eight x, that's nice and easy. And then the V, we've got an exponential here, we've got e to the power of a function so I hope you know that when you differentiate that, you have it will stay the same, but it will be multiplied at the front by the derivative of the function. So the derivative of minus 2x is minus 2, so that goes at the front, and then the rest of it stays the same. So that's how to differentiate an exponential. Good, now we can put these together and use the chain rule to get f dash of x. Did I just say chain rule? I meant product rule. <laughs> um, so we're going to do u times v, v dash plus v times u dash. Um, so I'm going to put the, the v dash first here and put it at the front of these brackets. I'm doing v times v dash times u, putting that in a bracket, and plus, and then the other two multiplied together the 8x multiplied by the e to the minus 2x. And we're trying to get it into a certain form. We're trying to get it um, um, in the way that they want. <laughs> so uh, maybe we'll start by multiplying this out. Minus 8x squared times e to the minus 2x. And then we'll have plus 16e to the minus 2x and then we'll have 8x e to the minus 2x. And we can see then that we've got a common factor of 8 and we've got a common factor of e to the minus 2x. They've put this at the end of the bracket. I'm just going to put it at the front just so it's really obvious what we're doing. So then in the bracket we'll have minus x squared plus 2 and plus x. And that is it. That's what they wanted. They've just put this at the end, which is the same thing. Great. So that's part A done. I hope you got that. I hope you're happy with that. Part B, hence find in its simplest form the exact coordinates of the stationary points of C. Stationary points are turning points. That's where the gradient is zero. So all of this that we've just done, f dash of x gives us the gradient. So we need to set that equal to zero to find the turning points. Oh, that arrow is annoying. I'm going to get rid of that. There we go. e to the minus 2x. So we've got 
a couple of things multiplying here to give us zero. So we can break this into where both of those equal zero. Um, if this is zero, it has no solutions. You can't have an e, an exponential or a power that equals zero. It just doesn't work. The, x, the e to the power of anything graph will always be hovering above the x-axis. It never goes through zero. e to the power of something can't equal zero. So that one is no solutions. I'm going to put a little sign there for contradiction, no solutions. Um, this one though can equal zero, of course, it's just quadratic. So we can solve that very easily using the quadratic formula or factorizing. I'm gonna change the signs of everything because I don't like that negative at the front. Um, x squared minus x, I'm gonna put that in the middle and then minus two, and then I'm gonna factorize that. So x minus two, and x plus one gives us zero. I need more space. Um, so if x minus two is zero, then x has to be two. And if x plus one is zero, then x has to be minus one. We want the coordinates of those stationary points. We need y as well. So we can put those back into the original equation. So the big complex one at the beginning that we started with. So that was four times x squared minus two times e to the minus two x. If you put those x coordinates into that and simplify, you should get the y values. So um, when x is two, um, I get that y is eight e to the minus four. Do check that you get the same. And x is minus one gives us that y is minus four. What is it? Minus 4e squared. Do check that. So if you look at the graph, we've got one that's positive, where x and y are both positive, and one where x and y are both negative. So if you look back at the graph, you can see those stationary points. One's there where, oh, that's a bit off. One's there where they're both um, negative, and one's there where they're both positive. What I might do, actually, we finished that part of the question, but I think I'll just put on those coordinates because they're useful for the next part of the question. So that is the minus one, um, minus four e squared. And that one is the maximum where they're both positive is two and eight e to the minus four. That is useful when we look at the graph transformation stuff in part C. So now we're given um, G and H, which are, um, it's the F of X graph that's been transformed in a couple of different ways. And it's asking us for the range. Remember domain is the X values and range is the Y values. So we're, we're looking for what the Y values can be. So um, part one is the range of G. G of X is two times F of X. So the transformation is two multiplying by the whole function. So that's the Y values that are gonna get multiplied by two. So it's a stretch in the Y direction, just the Y values times by two. The X values won't change. I find it quite useful just to draw a little sketch, however bad, um, just for the domain and range questions, just so you can see, visualize what's going on. So the G of X graph is just gonna be everything stretched by two. So the, the Y values get stretched by two and it's gonna have that kind of shape, isn't it? Um, it's not a brilliant sketch, I realize that. <laughs> I think it should probably cross the Y axis further down, but it doesn't matter. We've got the basic shape. Um, and we're thinking about what the y values can be. The maximum y values, I don't think there'll, there'll be a maximum limit, limit um, because looking up there, the y values are just getting greater and greater with no limit to them. So no restriction there for the range. Um, but there is a minimum limit here, look. It never goes further down past that point, never goes beyond there. So that's the coordinate that we know. 
but it has been transformed. So it's being transformed by multiplying the y value by two. So that is gonna be, that y value will now be minus eight e squared, because uh, it's this one here that's been multiplied by two. So the way that we can write the answer to that question, we can write it, what color am I going for? Blue. Uh, we can write the range as g of x. There's no upper limit, but there is a, a lower limit. So it's always gonna be greater than or equal to, because it can equal that point as well, greater than or equal to minus eight e squared. And that's it. That's the range for that part. Hopefully you got that one right. <clears throat> um, and then the last one is the range of h. Now h is the same again, but it's been all, also minus three. So um, the whole graph is moved down by three. Um, and I'm going to redraw this because it's um, not brilliant. So it's being, the y values are multiplied by two and then moved down by three. So it's still gonna have um, something there, it's gonna cross there and, oh, I don't know now about the maximum. Will the maximum be below? Yeah, no, it'll still be just above that axis, I think. Um, but possibly go down there, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> that's the general shape. Um, now just notice the, the oh, goodness me, that's not very well drawn. The domain here is x is greater than zero. It's actually cutting off this part of the graph. We're only interested in the positive x part of the graph. That's a bit tidier, isn't it? So the range for h is gonna be, the maximum is this point here, and the minimum will be this point here where it crosses the axis. So that's the range. So we need to find those two values. Um, what's the easiest one to get first? Um, <clears throat> Let's find, let's do the turning point first. So the, the original is eight e to the minus four. That's the y coordinate of the original, but we are timesing that by two and minusing three. So that's gonna have a value of 16 e to the minus four, multiplying it by two, and then taking off three. So that's the value for that, that maximum y value and the minimum y value will be where it crosses the axis. I think it's probably easiest just to get what this point is on the original and then transfer it across. This is where x is zero. So putting x is zero into this original equation, we can get the y coordinate. So if x is zero, then we'll have four times minus two times one. So that's gonna be minus eight. So we are, again, multiplying that by two and taking off three. So minus 16, minus three, that's minus 19. So that, those are the two values that the range is restricted by. So again, we can write the answer as h of x, because it's the range, and we're gonna write it in as an inequality like this this time. Um, again, they can both be equal to, and the bottom is minus 19, and the top is 16. It's not a very tidy one, is it? But that's all you can do, you can't really simplify that. Minus three. And that's it. Well, I hope that made sense. Bit messy handwriting today, but I hope that was clear to you. And um, keep practicing that, do it through yourself if you need to again. There's a lot there, it's a good question to practice because there's so much in there. Um, so many different skills that involves. It's a good question. Hope you enjoyed that and happy revision. Bye.